Hello everyone, my name is Visibility, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to use Quixel Mixer to make textures and blend textures and put them in Blender and use them. Now, I apologize I haven't been posting tutorials lately, it's just because I've been a little bit sick, as you might be able to tell from my voice. But I just wanted to get this one out there because it's a pretty quick tutorial. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up Mixer, and Mixer is completely free for anyone to download while it's in beta. So I'd go ahead and grab it because it's a really cool tool that can have some pretty cool uh, uh, stuff. So basically, all you're gonna want to do is create a new project, and I'm just gonna tutorial one because I already created this and messed up the video. But we're gonna add a new project. We come up here, new mix, add new mix, and I'm just gonna title this tutorial. What am I typing? Tutorial mix. Okay. And uh, resolution, just keep that on 2048, and PBR workflow, put it on specular. If you're making more of a metal material, you just put it on metalless. But right now, we're just going to use specular. So once you're in it, you're going to be greeted by this. And the, to move around, uh, to pan the camera, like this, uh, just gra just hold your middle mouse button down and just pan around with your mouse. And to do this, which is like rotate the camera view, just hold alt and left click, and that's what you're going to want to do. I'm actually going to change this to indoors, because that's what it's default as. <coughs> so... Uh, this right here is add surface layer, and it's basically your actual materials that you're going to be adding to the plane. Uh, this right here is a decal atlas layer, and I'm not exactly sure what that does. I mean, adding a decal, probably. Add a solid layer, which is just like a solid color. Add a liquid layer, which is really handy if you want like water or like any kind of liquid in your scene. And it also goes with noise layer, which just like bends the plane to have like different spots uh, of different types in it. And then, uh add paint layer which is just painting textures so what we're gonna want to do is we're going to want to uh, add our own textures because unfortunately you don't get a uh, quixel mega scans free with this you're gonna have to still have a subscription to buy those but it does come with some uh, small textures so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go into cc0 textures.com which is a really cool texture uh, site and I have it bookmarked up here, and I'm just going to go to it. And this is the site right here, and it has uh, 442 public domain PBR textures that you can download completely for free and use for whatever you want. Uh, it gives all the details right here. If you guys want to read that, pause the video or something. But basically, what I kind of want to do is I want to make a ground material. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna look for ground which is right here you can also search it at the top of the page but you can see we have all these really high quality ground textures um, now I have found that they aren't as high quality in mixer I don't know if I just don't have settings right but if you, uh, it's made for mixing so you can make it look good so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to really quick grab which one am I gonna grab uh, this one looks good. Let me see what that looks like. Hmm, I could use that one. I kind of want a rocky one, though. Uh, so, I already have this one. So, no. I'm probably going to download this one. I already have that one, too. <laughs> I already have a lot of these textures. Uh, what about this one? Alright, so I'm going to download this one. And... Basically, I have a folder on my computer where I download all my textures to, so I'm just going to uh, put that in there, right here. And I'm just going to create a new folder in this. You guys obviously won't have this, but if you do, you can do the same thing. And I'm just going to call mine Ground24. Oops. Oh, I already have Ground24. Huh. Okay, we're just going to keep that in. Because... Alright, why do I have so many of these sections? Anyway, I'm just going to re-download it just to show you guys. And my internet is like super slow right now because apparently my internet doesn't exist in my neighborhood right now. And we called my internet service provider and they're just like, yeah, you know, uh, your main line just doesn't connect to your house. Where so I was like, okay. So I'm just going to open this up in one raw and extract it to uh, that growl... Gredden24. <laughs> and so now that I have that extracted here, we're going to go back into Mixer, and over here in the Library tab, Import Custom Service. And now in the Diffuse, you can open up that uh, folder that you saved it to, which in my case is Grudem24, 
and open up a uh, uh, texture underscore color or col. And what this is going to do is it should automatically uh, get every other texture um, right. Now, I've had this happen in some cases where it swaps the roughness in the normal maps. And basically the way to fix that is to just go in here and just set them right. By uh, RGH is rough and NRM is normal. So just set those back. And uh, I'm normal, I'm just going to grab the normal texture. Then now we have this texture. And so... If we click next, we can lower the height a little bit. I don't want to lower it a ton, about 2.3. I'm just going to call this ground underscore grass. I'm going to set it by 1 meter by 1 meter. And there, category, I'm just going to uh, soil. Now once we import this, we can uh, add a surface layer. And now we have our ground grass that we just imported. And give it a second, and now we have this here. And you can see that it is extremely glossy, which I don't like. So I'm actually going to turn this down a little bit. Actually, a lot. So now we can see that it is not as glossy, and it looks a little better. Uh, let me see if I... Uh, high and low frequencies. Yeah. Okay, so now we can see we have a pretty good-looking material right here. Obviously, it doesn't look super good. But uh, the point of this program is to mix... Uh, textures <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another solid layer and I'm gonna go all the way down and this soil mud right here um, is what I'm gonna use it comes with quicksil um, mixer and I'm gonna use this and you can use any texture it doesn't matter you can use your own textures or anything this is just for tutorial purposes I want to make a pretty nice looking shader so I'm just gonna use theirs so now we see we have this um, pretty cool looking uh, soil with like some kind of like small stuff in there and if we turn down the radius we can turn down how much is actually there like I want about there the threshold is how much it mixes so if we go there and I'm gonna add another solid layer I'm gonna add old concrete and give it a second so now we have old concrete and old concrete can come up and be about right there that looks good and so now you can theoretically we can stop but what I'm going to actually do is I am going to add a liquid layer so now if we add a liquid layer and turn the threshold up you can see it just covers the whole thing and I don't really want that I want just to have like liquid in some areas so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a noise layer and you can see it doesn't do anything. It just kind of bends the thing in some weird shape. And it doesn't affect the liquid layer. That's because the noise layer is on top of the liquid layer. So it's basically telling the liquid layer to bend with everything else. So we're going to drag it. Just click on it and drag it below the liquid layer. And you can see now we have this like kind of muddy just uh, puddle kind of thing going on. Which I kind of like. You can also adjust the frequency of the... Uh, noise to change how it looks now I'm just going to you can also change the amplitude if you want like really spiky for some reason but yeah I think it looks pretty good and so now what we're going to do is we are going to go over your export options and just make sure everything is all right where you want it to be saved and the surface name is what folder it's going to be saved in. Make sure to create subfolder is checked. Otherwise, it'll just have a bunch of files in that folder. Um, all these should automatically be checked. And so now if you go in a file and quick export, actually, I'm going to save this first. Uh, save that as that. I'm going to quick export. And down here, it should say exporting maps, and then it should just give it a few seconds, and it should export all the maps. So now, once that disappears, you're free to uh, minimize this or close it or whatever, and open up Blender. Now, what we're going to do is actually create the uh, actual thing. So, uh, for this, uh, your computer might not be able to handle all the subdivisions. Um, I've had my blender or my whole computer crash sometimes uh, So the way to get around that is to It's kind of trial and error so Basically uh, keep your render 
uh, subdivisions at very low and keep your uh, your view subdivisions very low and keep your render resolutions a little bit higher than your viewer but not super high so we're going to delete our default cube and add a plane like shift a and add a plane okay we're going to size it up a little bit uh, to about there maybe yeah there it looks good then we're going to duplicate uh, this window I'm actually going to full screen blender duplicate this button, uh, this window and change this to shader editor and with the plane selected you just click new and what we're going to do for now is I'm going to teach you guys how to use PBR textures or any kind of textures with all these maps so first image texture we're going to use uh, also make sure to tab you unwrap I don't I don't I don't know if that actually does anything but it, I, I think it does since it's a plane you shouldn't need a UV unwrap it but I think blender just freaks out sometimes over it so just open uh, from oops, what am I doing? Okay, so just open your texture and just go over to where uh, you saved your file. In my case, it's in textures and it was tutorial uh, mix. Yeah, right here. And so first thing you want to open is your diffuse. This also goes by albedo or color. It's basically the flat image texture of your uh, material. So once we have that, we are going to shift D this, change this to non-color data. Um, open your folder and open a normal map. The uh, your text, your uh, material name and underscore normal. Just open that up, and so now we have this normal thing, okay? And so if we uh, right now if we plug this into normal, we can see what happens is it doesn't. Right now I'm using Eevee as my uh, render engine just so I can preview it. I'm going to switch the cycles here in a little bit. We can see it doesn't do anything, right? Like if we like unhook this it like it does it does nothing I mean, it makes it a little bit less reflective but that's it that's because we have a color going into our normal so what we're going to want to do is we're going to shift a add a normal map make sure it's a normal map not a normal and plug color into color and normal into uh, normal into normal so now you can see we have this uh it kind of looks three-dimensional obviously it's not three-dimensional as you can see right here it's still flat and that that's uh, good enough for like small scenes or video games if you don't want it to be seen. But I want a close up for this texture. So what we're actually going to do later is add a displacement map. So for for, for right now, we're still going to add uh, more materials. So I'm just going to shift D this, open our folder again, and open our gloss. Now uh, you see our prints board doesn't have a gloss uh, input. It has a roughness. Now they are basically the same things, except for the blacks and whites on the uh, gloss is flipped from the roughness. So we're going to need to add an invert node. So just shift A and add an invert node. Connect the color to the color and the color to the roughness. And now you can see that we have like reflections, kind of. Yeah, right there you can see it. Uh, can't really see it right now though. So now we're going to add, we're going to shift D this one more time and add a specular, which is the your material underscore specular and so we're gonna add that and just put this in our specular and so now we have this you can see it's kind of reflecting now and everything which looks good so now what we're going to do is we're going to add also uh, I don't know if this does anything but I get paranoid so I just like connect these all to UV uh, if I don't need to do this someone in the comments please tell me so I might just be wasting a lot of time. Um, so now we're going to add our displacement map. And what displacement map does is it basically, you have whites, blacks, and grays. Grays is your kind of, grays are your kind of middle ground that says, hey, this should be flat. Blacks is, hey, this should be, like, low. And whites is like, hey, this is what's high. So what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to add a uh, subdivision surface to this. And we're going to turn our view up to about 5 and render up to 6. And before you apply it, you can notice that it's a circle. Now, obviously, we don't want it to be a circle. So the way we fix this, and the easiest way to fix this, is to hit tab. And you get in edit mode. And you see it's a square in edit mode, but it's not a square in uh, solid view. So hit end on your keyboard. And over here, where it says edges data, turn mean crease all the way up to 1. And then you can tab out of edit mode, tab out of that window by hitting N. 
So now we can apply this uh, subdivision surface. And we're also going to add another subdivision surface now. Uh, only turn your view up to max too, because uh, that's what I found is best for my computer. It might be a little bit different for you if you have a beefier computer than me. Uh, I have a 1050 T. I have a 1050 uh, and an i7 4770K. Uh, so I don't know. And you can go ahead and turn uh, your render up to four. Uh, I found anything over that it will crash my blender once I render it. So basically, now we have this. And we're going to add our displacement map. So if we go into, uh, I don't apply this yet because I still have, to, I might have to change it later. So I'm going to uh, go add modifier and under deform, add a displace and click new texture down here and click these little like slider looking things. Uh, and it should bring you to this. Now you're going to want to click open. Your texture might not have this by the way. Uh, it depends on what kind of texture you have, and depends on if it needs a displacement map. Sometimes it doesn't, and sometimes you won't have this. So, just <coughs> just keep that in mind. If you don't find this, you can just skip this step. And so you should see uh, your material name underscore displacement dot exr. Now we're just gonna open that, and you can see it's like really, really high right now, and that's not good because like right now it just looks like some very bad mountains. So the way we fix that is go back into our modifiers and change your strength down to 0.1. And so now you can see that we have our things. And you might you might see that it obviously does not have near enough subdivisions because it's all like pixely and polygonal. That is because uh, in our subdivisions we have our view at 2 and our render at 4. Now, what that means is in your viewport, it's only going to show two subdivisions, but once you render it, it's going to show four. Now, you can always adjust this uh, as much as you want, but there is a limit to how much you can adjust it uh, by your computer crashing. So, uh, do that at your own risk. Make sure to save this every time you render, otherwise it could crash your computer and you might lose it. But, other than that, that's pretty much... Uh, how you need it to be so yeah i uh, hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial uh as always leave a like it really helps you know uh tutorials man they're really taking a toll on me i'm joking but uh if you guys want me to make more tutorials to make sure to leave a thumbs up on the video my tutorials have been doing pretty good recently so uh that's basically it uh for texturing in uh mixer over to blender so uh, what I'm going to do actually is control S and say this says tutorial, tutorial, uh, Matt. And I'm going to zero and just like, I'm going to put it right here and just like control all zero. And then like G, oop, oop, camera, G, bring it out a little bit. Oh, where am I? Wait, hold up. No, that's not how it's supposed to be. Okay. Okay, and bring it down a little bit. I'm gonna change uh, background to black. Uh, I'm gonna delete my point. I'm gonna delete my point light. Wait. And I'm gonna add a area light. I'm just doing this for uh, so I can see how it look and render. I did say I was going to go to cycles, but you know, I decided not to. Alright. So, just find a spot. Uh, also, I'm not exactly sure why this happens. It might be something with a texture mapping, but I don't know exactly. Uh, if, we, if we look in here, it doesn't really happen. I think it might be something with the texture mapping. I don't know. If I find out, then I'll tell you guys. But... Uh, then I'm just going to click F12, and it should, if it doesn't crash. You see my mouse is lagging a lot. Yeah, okay, it didn't crash. So, uh, now we have these like little things right here that are blocky. Just increase subdivisions, um, and that should help it. So, thanks guys for watching. Leave a like. It really helps me out. My name is Visibility. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.